Out of the fog, out of the night, and into us American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. about our newest adventure, here is Bulldog Drummond. I call this story Escape into Death. Late one Friday night, a few weeks ago, Denny and I were driving along a highway, bypassing a lake resort. We had not seen any traffic whatever on the road for quite some time, when Denny suddenly remarked, Oh, I say, sir, there's a car coming up behind us like fury. Oh, yes, I see him in the mirror. I'll get him plenty of room to pass Hear me, almost side Yes. He's taking that curve ahead practically on two wheels. He's there. out of sight already. You better be careful. There's rather a steep slope beyond this curve. Yes, I see it. Now that we're rounding the curve. Oh, good heavens. What's the matter? Don't you see where our headlights are focused at the foot of this slope, sir? Oh, yes, of course, Denny. The fellow must have crashed into something. You see the wreckage? No, no, that's not wreckage, Denny. Why, well, it's, it's a barricade of some sort across the road. Yes. Our reckless driver friend must stop barely in time not to crash through it. It appears we'll have to stop too, sir. There's a sign on the barricade. Road closed, bridge washed out. Oh, what a nuisance. Now we'll have to... Jenny, wait. Yes, sir? The driver of that other car. He's not at the wheel. Perhaps he's going to have to walk down and look at the bridge. No, no, no. We'd have seen him. Our headlights picked up the car when it hardly stopped. Come on, Benny. Oh, look. There he is, sir. Slumped on the floor by the front seat. Open the door. I'll pull him out. All right. You don't suppose he could have blacked out, sir, like an aviator in a power dive? There's a knife in his neck, Denny. This man has been murdered. I could almost swear I saw nobody else in the car with this fellow when he passed us. Then how was he stabbed? Look closely here, Denny. See the angle of this knife? Uh, uh, the angle? Yes. It penetrated the left front side of his throat in a straight line and severed the jugular vein. What do you make of that, sir? Come with me. Hmm, just as I thought. There are footprints in the turf at the edge of the road. Two men's footprints, apparently. And one of them must be a knife thrower. And an expert marksman. There's been no recent flood or heavy storm, Denny. If I'm not mistaken, we'll find there's nothing wrong with the bridge down the line. Then why the barricade? I believe it was deliberately set up here to stop the driver of that car so that he'd be an easy target for the murderer's knife. If we hadn't happened along at almost the same moment, I don't doubt this barricade would have been quickly removed. Then someone must have known this chap would be driving along this road, sir. Exactly. And about this time of night, I should say. Well, let's go back to the car. All right. Look in the door pockets in that compartment on the dashboard, Denny. Try and find the registration of the car. Uh, yes, sir. I'll look through the dead man's effects on his body for identification. Now, uh, here's the registration, sir. It's made out to Joseph Bowman of Acme City. Hmm. The same identification is in this billfold. And, Denny, there's more than a thousand dollars in it. Perhaps the murder was a robbery attempt and we came upon the scene too quickly for the killer. Hmm, possibly. But I have a feeling there's something more than that behind this. Acme City, Denny, is where the Acme Explosives Corporation has its parent plant. I... I'm afraid I don't get the connection, sir. There may not be any. But after we notify the local authorities of what's happened here, we're going to put in a long-distance call to the Acme Explosives Corporation and find out what they know about Joseph Bowman, if anything. Back 
Explosives Corporation. My name is Captain Drummond. I'm calling from Lake Suwego. What can I do for you, sir? I'd like to talk to somebody there who can give me some information about a man named Joseph Bowman. Mr. Joseph Bowman is our chemical engineer. Oh. I don't suppose he's at the plant at this hour of the night. Just a moment, sir. Hold the line, please. I'll connect you with one of our executives. Hello? Who is it? I'm Captain Drummond. I'm inquiring about your chemical engineer, Mr. Joseph Bowman. What do you want to know about Bowman? In the first place, whether he's at the plant or at his home right now. You say you're Captain Drummond? Yes. I've heard of you, Drummond, if you are who you say you are. But this organization is engaged in some very important munitions work. We don't give out information to unauthorized persons, especially who make long-distance telephone calls in the middle of the night. I quite understand that. As a matter of fact, our telephone operator should never have given you Bowman's position here. Well, I hope it won't cause her any trouble. The name of our official is fairly well known in Acme City, so no harm is done. But as for anyone's present whereabouts... I take it, then, that Bowman is not available tonight. What makes you so interested in where Bowman is? Because a man driving a car registered in Bowman's name and carrying a wallet with his identification in it has just been murdered here at Lake Suwego. Murdered? How? His car was stopped by a fake road barricade and a knife was thrown from the roadside into his throat. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Because I wanted to be sure I was talking with someone in authority who might know what motive anybody might have to murder Bowman. Well, I know. I am Bowman. I guess I'm lucky to be alive. If you're Bowman, then who was murdered in your car tonight? I don't know. But I do know that knife must have been meant for me. We'll return to Bulldog Drummond and the story he calls Escape into Death in just a moment. driving an automobile at terrific speed is stopped by a false barricade on a highway and apparently killed by an axe hurled from the roadside into his neck. Identification indicates he is Joseph Bowman, chemical engineer of an explosive company, but Drummond, determined by a long-distance telephone, Bowman is alive. It is meantime the next day, Saturday, as Drummond and Denny sit in Bowman's office. I expected you in uh, Acme City much sooner, Captain Drummond, after your midnight telephone call. Denny and I remained at Lake Suwego until the local authorities identified the man murdered in your car with your identification on him. Oh, then he's been identified, huh? He's a convict who escaped from state prison just a day or two ago. Mr. Bowman, how did this man happen to have your car and your wallet? Well, the truth is, he waylaid me as I was about to drive out of my garage late yesterday afternoon. He must have struck me with a blackjack or some such instrument. Yeah, for your money in a getaway car, no doubt. Uh, no doubt. But you didn't report the attack to the Acme City Police, Mr. Bowman. No, I did not. And you were extremely cautious about admitting your identity to me on the phone last night. For your information, Captain Drummond, I was having our operator trace your call while I, I engaged you in conversation to stall for time. Yes, I suspected as much. Mr. Bowman, you weren't surprised at being attacked. And to be honest, I was not, Captain Drummond. You thought the attack on you had more significance than a mere hold-up by an escaped convict? Yes, I suspected it might have. Do I guess rightly when I surmise the convict unknowingly took a route which you had intended to follow in your car last night on a trip of uh, great importance, shall we say? I'm not at liberty to give you the details, Captain Drummond. We're doing secret work for the government. I can tell you this much, though. I was to drive to Washington last night with certain plans which had not quite reached the stage of perfection. But which would be dangerous if they should fall into the hands of enemy agents? Very dangerous. 
Were those plans in your car? No. Fortunately, I was just on my way here to the factory to pick them up when I was waylaid. Who knew you were taking that trip to Washington? Well, only two persons, but they're beyond suspicion. Yet somebody evidently knew that you were taking the trip and killed an escaped convict in your car by uh, coincidence, Mr. Bowman? Denny is right, Mr. Bowman. No one is above suspicion. Well, Mr. Jordan, the head of the firm, knew, naturally, but... And who else? I had intended at first to take my secretary with me, but Mr. Jordan thought better of it. Oh, uh, Mr. Jordan thought better of it. He was quite right. There was no sense in risking two lives, as it turns out. Hmm. This secretary of yours, Mr. Bowman. Miss Harrington. She's been with me for several years. I'll vouch for her trustworthiness. Perhaps. But may we see her? I'm afraid not. I gave her the weekend off. I know she's gone out of town. Just where, I can't say. At least we can see Mr. Jordan. Of course. You'll find him at home this weekend on his suburban estate. Several miles outside the city. Better still, I'll drive out there with you myself. Just a moment, please, Miss Harrington. We're trying to locate Mr. Jordan. Can't you hurry? This is a long distance call. It's terribly important. Well, I'm sorry, but we're doing the best we can. Mr. Jordan is not in his room. I'm having him taped in the lobby. If I could try the pause here over the, the late show or something. I assure you, we're doing the best we can. Oh, uh, here he is, I believe. Yes, hold the line, please. Can I hold this at Tom Jordan? Oh, no, yeah, unless if you've been, I'd have the clear places you're all over. I was only out on the porch. Why? What's up? Tom, are you where you can talk? Where I can talk? Say, what's the matter with you? Calling me long distance and then giving me double talk? Something terrible has happened. Can anyone hear what I'm saying? Not unless they're listening in, and they are much too busy around this hotel for small stuff like that. For heaven's sake, Grace, what's on your mind? Listen, and don't repeat what I say. Somebody tried to murder Mr. Bowman last night. What? It happened at Lake Chihuahua. No. Yes, Tom. Gee, I, I did hear something about somebody getting killed in town last night. Don't mention my name, please. But I want to know something. What? I told you I might be driving through Chihuahua last night with Mr. Bowman. And I might have a few minutes to stop and see you at the hotel you're spending your vacation at. Yes, yes, I uh, remember you said something like that, but I... Tom... You didn't drop a hint to anybody that Mr. Bowman or I might be coming through there last night? Hey, what do you take me for? I can keep a secret. Oh. I'm so relieved to hear you say that, Tom. Well, don't worry about because it. Because I'm going to have to admit I told you. But now it doesn't matter. Wait a minute. Admit to whom? There's an investigation, actually. Captain Drummond wants to see Mr. Bowman today. They're probably together right now. Don't be a fool. We haven't done anything. Don't get it in the dust bunny mentioned something you don't have to. Well, I'll tell you what I want to know. They probably won't even ask me. I won't be back in the office until Monday, anyway. But if I am asked, I'll have a clear conscience. Where are you now? Oh, I'm just leaving for my weekend. Well, listen, you stay right where you are. I want to have a talk with you. I can make it back to the city in a couple of hours. Miss Harrington's apartment is in the second floor rear. We may as well walk up there. Uh, yes, sir. I do hope this visit will be more productive than our trip out to see Mr. Jordan. I do, too. We wasted all three hours going there. I think you think Miss Harrington might be of any help. Both Mr. Bowman and Miss Jordan swear by her integrity. I know, Denny, but Miss Harrington was to have taken the Washington trip with Bowman. In her disappointment of not doing so, she might have dropped a careless remark to someone. Yeah, she probably won't be at home. Mr. Bowman insists that she intended to go out of town for the weekend. Yes, but he doesn't know where. She's not home. I'm afraid we'll have to take the liberty of looking about her apartment for some clue as to where she might be. Oh, uh, just the apartment, sir. Miss Grace Harrington on the name plate. Ring the bell, then. Hmm. No one answers the doorbell, sir. Are you for Master Chief? Come along. Yes, sir. That appears to be the living room off this hallway. Let's look in there first. Very well. Oh, dear, sir. Look on the floor. Yes. Oh. Help me turn her over there. She's dead. Murdered. Choked to death. Must be Miss Harrington from the way Mr. Bowman described her. Oh, yes, beyond question. Without a doubt, she was responsible for the attempt on Bowman's life last night. You mean you think she was an enemy agent? Not necessarily. In fact, I question whether she knew Bowman's would be killer at all. Then why has she been murdered? Miss Harrington, as I surmised a little while ago, probably let drop an unguarded hint to somebody of Bowman's intended trip. That person passed it on to somebody else, the actual enemy agent. And he told her to close her mouth? No, I think not, Denny. The convict driving Bowman's car was murdered by a knife thrower. Miss Harrington was strangled. 
If I'm not mistaken, her killer was someone she knew and trusted. Oh, dear. Now she'll never be able to tell us who it was. Mm. Must be some evidence around here of who her friends and associates. Stop any sense. Uh, 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 what is it? But let's have a closer look. Hmm. See here, then. The imprint of a man's rubber heel on the carpet. And quite clear. Oh, but it's a very common make of rubber heel, sir. There must be thousands, probably millions of that type sold. That's yes, true. But remember the footprints we found by the roadside last night. One set was of heels just like this. You still gives us no idea who the man is. Not as yet, Denny. Hand me that telephone book, will you please? Uh, would you like me to look up the number for you? Yes, you will. Bowman's home number. He may be able to give us a lead on Miss Harrington's friend. So I say, sir. Yes, look at this. What is it? There's a folder that was under the telephone book. Advertising resort hotels at Lake Suego. Lake Suego. Let's see that. Yes, here you are, sir. Denny, you stuck it. This may be the clue we need. Oh, I'm glad you think so, sir. Here's the telephone number of the Overlook Hotel at Lake Suego, and it's underlined. Possibly Miss Harrington was planning to go there this weekend. Oh, well, that would be too much of a coincidence. More likely, she knows someone who's been stopping there and had occasion to call him. Uh, shall I check with Long Distance? Do that, Denny. And then we shall start immediately for the Overlook Hotel at Suego. <laughs> Yes, I see, sir, and only one night clerk on duty. He'll undoubtedly know who was on duty this afternoon. Oh, uh, yes, gentlemen? My name is Captain Drummond. This is my man, Denny. Yeah, well, what can I do for you, Captain Drummond? Can you tell me who was on duty at this hotel switchboard at 12.30 this afternoon? Why, uh, I was. Oh? Do you recall a long-distance call from a Miss Harrington in Acme City at 12.30 today? From a Miss Harrington in Acme City? It was a station-to-station call. What we want to know is whom she called here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain Drummond, but the hotel doesn't permit us to give out information on calls that come in for our guests. So it was a guest. You remember the call. Well, as a matter of fact, we keep a record of all calls, but I don't understand your interest, gentlemen. If you must know, our interest is murder. Murder? Yes. Miss Harrington's been murdered in Acme City. Great Scott. Now, do you mind telling us whom she called at the hotel here today? Murder? Well, uh, just a moment, Captain Drummond. I'll look through the records and make sure... Yes, here's the notation in the call. Miss Harrington called Mr. Thomas Jordan in room 815. Mr. Thomas Jordan, huh? And what happened after he received the call? Why, I'm sure I don't know. I, I paid no attention after I made the connection. Did you know whether Jordan went out of the hotel this afternoon? Well, I couldn't say that. We have hundreds of guests. Yes, yes, of course. Is he here now? That I do know. He went out through the lobby half an hour or so ago. He may be sitting on the porch overlooking the lake. Uh, I'll have him paid. Uh, no, no, wait, please, wait. I'd, I'd rather you come to the porch with us and point him out. He mustn't be warned. He's under suspicion. Well, uh, yes, uh, all right. Uh, uh, come along, then. Yeah, the porch looks almost as bad as that. And it is rather late, then. You see Jordan anywhere out here, Clerk? No, I, uh, I'm afraid I... Yes, that looks like him sitting in that chair in the shadows at the far end of the porch. Thank you. Come along, Denny. You, uh, you don't need me anymore? No, no, you've been a big help. Thank you. Well, thank you. I do hope there won't be any trouble. I would just saunter up to Jordan casually, Denny. Act as if we're merely looking out of the lake until we get to it. Yes, I understand, sir. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Huh? Oh, hello. Uh, do I know you? Not yet. My name is Captain Drummond. Yes, Bulldog Drummond, and I'm Denny. Bulldog Drummond? Oh, I, I'm pleased to meet you, Captain Drummond. You're well acquainted with Miss Grace Harrington, I believe. Grace Harrington, why? Yes, yes, I, I know Grace Harrington, but uh, what's this all about? You're flashed like Denny on the heels of his shoes. Uh, same, right? Keep your feet on that railing, Jordan. No, I... uh, there's the same makeup rubber here, yes. sir. And if I'm not mistaken, the foot is the same size as the footprints we found by the roadside last now, look night. Look here, I, I don't know what you fellas are trying to pull on me. We're not trying to pull anything, Jordan, if you're innocent. Innocent of what? Of the murder of Grace Harrington today and the attempted murder of Joseph Bowman last night. I, I didn't have anything to do with it. I, I didn't know what it was all about, I, I swear. He didn't tell me until... Who didn't tell you? Well, I... I don't dare tell you unless you promise that you'll protect me. Oh, grab him, Denny. <coughs> so what happened too fast? You see... Yes, uh, yes Denny, dead, with a knife in his neck. Oh, dear, another knife. Came over the veranda railing, out of the dark, from that direction. Look, sir, at the foot of that path, the man running out there to that little pier. Come on, after him. Leap the rail. Right. Now, look, he's getting into that speedboat. And he's shoving off. Stop. Stop, or we'll file. He's getting away. <laughs> Oh, we missed him, sir. He's crouched so low. Now he's out of range. Yes, on his way to murder Bowman. Denny, we've got to find another speedboat and try to head him off. And there's not another speedboat in sight, sir. (laughs) 
Back to the climax of our story in just a moment. killed Thomas Gordon and raced away across Lake Suego in a speedboat, leaving Drummond and Denny helpless on shore. We find them now on a fast express train roaring into Acme City. No, oh, I'm afraid fate is against us, sir. Why, Denny? Why, if we could have found another speedboat in time, we might have overtaken and captured that vicious killer. Well... Luckily, we did find a boat in time to bring us across the lake and catch this express to Acme City. I know, but the killer has gotten away. Not yet. I believe he's on this train. On this train? What makes you think that, sir? Why do you suppose he raced off in a speedboat, Denny? Well, to escape, I should say. No, 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 no. He could easily have lost himself in the woods along the lake shore. He might even have had a car concealed and made a leisurely getaway. It would take him all of two hours to get to Acme City from Lake Suego by car. Well, what if he did? Well, don't you see, Denny? By crossing the lake in 15 minutes, he was sure to catch this express and make Acme City in three quarters of an hour. He hoped that way to beat us to Bowman. You feel suddenly intent to murder Bowman tonight? I'm almost positive. I only don't understand why. After all the plans he's after, he's safely locked up in the plant. It's not after the plans, Denny. You remember Bowman told us his plans are not yet perfected. The enemy wants is to kill him, so those plans will never be completed. Yeah, we seem to be pulled into the station, sir. Yes, yes, we'll have to hurry and get a cab to Bowman's home. I only hope we'll be in time. Come on. Oh, I insist there's been a jinx on this case, sir. Imagine having to wait three minutes at the station before this cab came along. But you're right, Benny. I have an uneasy hunch the cab we just missed had the killer in it. Oh, dear. If all this frantic chase turns out to be secret. Well, we'll know in a moment. Stop at the big house in the next corner, driver. Isn't that a cab pulling away from Bowman's house now, sir? I believe it is. Hurry, driver. All right, here we are. Stop here. Keep the change. Come on, Danny. Yes, sir. This front door's wide open. Follow me, Danny. Yes, I'm with you, sir. All right, now this way. Yes, lead the way, sir. The bedroom door is open. There must be there. Captain. Oh, it's dark in the bedroom. The moonlight's coming through the window. The figure moving toward the bed. If I see him with a knife gleaming in his hand. Yeah, let him hear it. He's aiming at that knife at the bedroom. I'll try to get it out of his hand first. Oh, I'm praying you don't miss that. <laughs> It's all right, Mr. Bowman. Don't get excited. Denny, find the light switch. I already have that. Oh! Captain Drummond. But Denny, what's happening? Who, who is that on the floor? That's the enemy agent who just tried to kill you, Mr. Bowman. Captain Drummond just saved your life. Well, is, is the fellow dead? No. No, my shot winged him and he struck his head when he fell. He'll recover to face a more fitting death. Why? Why, he's a Japanese, sir. Yes, Denny. And that reminds me. Uh, yes, sir? I guess you pick up this Jap's knife before he comes to. We can't let him save his own face. <laughs> 